So AC family, I figured, you know what? Third time's a charm. And I went on to look for another young ant colony to add to our growing family of ant kingdoms in the Antiverse on our channel. And so AC family, it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you yet another new budding ant colony. And guys, I know you will truly love them. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. AC family meet our new colony of golden ants. They're truly amazing. And you guys will love the home I have planned for them. How they reacted to it as well as the epic feeding experiment in this video, where we try to figure out what particular food these ants eat. I'll also really be needing your help and opinions regarding this golden ant colony later on in the video. So as always, do keep on watching until the end. I also have a neat surprise for you all. Now admittedly, I actually don't know the exact species of these ants, as I'm still awaiting identification from the pros. I know they belong to the awesome well-known genus of spiny ants known as Polyrachis, but with over 600 different Polyrachis species worldwide, along with the fact that we're discovering new species all the time. And these particular Polyrachis don't seem to exactly match any of the catalogued Polyrachis ants listed in my country. I'm not going to attempt to ID them now, but we'll just refer to these new ants of ours as golden ants for simplicity due to their shiny golden gasters. Look at them all huddled up in there, together in their test tube. Inside you'll see workers and lots of brood, meaning eggs, larvae, and cocoons. Though it's hard to tell right now, there are actually five queens in this colony, all laying eggs. We're about to get a much better view of these ants when they emerge from this test tube for the first time. Happening right now. AC family, behold, an empty plastic critter crawler. This will be the colony's temporary quarantine facility over the next few days while I observe the ants and try to learn more about them. Being unidentified, I pretty much know little about them. One of the things I wanted to figure out was what these ants like to eat. You see, this genus is known to be very picky with food preferences in captivity, as wild polyrachis can be quite specialized with preferred food menu, including honeydew from select plant insects, nectar from specific flowering plants, as well as a host of insects from their habitats, etc. In the past, we actually had a different species of polyrachis on this channel, the platinum dragons, but they proved to be hard to keep in captivity due to being picky with diet. The colony eventually stopped eating and growing, so I ended up releasing them. So one of the things I was determined to find out with regards to these golden ants was if they would accept or convert well to a more traditional pet ant diet with food items that were easier for me to source. But I wanted to make this bare plastic enclosure a bit more hospitable for our beloved golden ants, so I filled the bottom with gravel medium. I then added a few wooden sticks, some dried plant twigs, and voila! Our simple quarantine living space was complete and ready to host our new golden ant colony. What do you think of it? Do you think they'll like it? I sure hope so. It had a ton of neat natural looking places for the ants to explore and climb. I added water to the gravel layer for humidity. Next, before moving the ants in, I wanted to try adding this, some sweet chili, which is always my preferred go-to ant offering as most ant species love the stuff. As many of you already know, my pet ant colonies love it, wild ant colonies love it, and my hope was that our golden ants would love it too. Let's place it right here. There we go. Man, even my mouth was watering just looking at that sweet jelly. And now all was complete. I carefully placed the colony in. I was so excited to see them have their first taste of freedom from this tube. But my idea was to still allow the colony to use this test tube as their nest, if they so chose. But if they did decide to move out and into the soil, or create a nest in and around the wood or twigs, then that was okay too. I just didn't want to pressure them to move out if they saw the test tube as home. What I was more interested in, first and foremost, was if they would accept this sweet jelly cup 
If so, it would mean this jelly could be their main carb staple diet, which would be ideal because it's what my other ants love and I have so much of it already stocked. The ants were clearly eager to be let out. Check out those workers trying to pull at the cotton. When a young ant colony is pulling at the cotton like this, it's a sure sign they're ready to be let out so they could start hunting for food. So icy family, let's make our new golden ants happy, shall we? It's time to release the ants into their new home. I slowly but carefully pulled at the cotton. And then, freedom. Ants crawled out, fell out, and even some brood got stuck to the cotton. I wasn't worried though because I knew the workers would take them to safety shortly. I didn't want to completely remove the cotton though, so the interior of the test tube could remain humid with minimal air movement, just as they like it. The bulk of the colony within the test tube remained calm as air. But as for the ants that were outside the test tube, they were already busy exploring. Check out this ant on our jelly cup, but it didn't seem interested in having a taste. Perhaps it was just still dazed by the new living space and outside world. More and more ants were out exploring. It was important that the ants didn't come rushing out all at once because they needed the majority of the colony to remain at home to care for and protect the brood and queens. But being a VIP didn't stop some of the queens from coming to inspect the new opening of their nest. While the brave workers outside the nest were determined to map out the new territories. Some ants stood on guard near the nest entrance, cleaning themselves so they could better smell the onset of an intruder or danger, while another of the colony's curious queens was brave enough to actually pop her head out to have a smell of the new strange outside world. I'm sure the ants could smell our green jelly offering just beneath them, but strangely there was still no interest in it from the ants. The ants were still much more interested to explore the new space. They climbed our branches, stopping to periodically clean themselves. It was at this time that we could get a much better look at them. Man, AC family, don't they look just amazing? You can see their spines, the shine on their gasters, the details and textured ridges of their exoskeleton. Polyrachis ants are truly one of the world's most beautiful ants, in my opinion. What do you guys think? The ants continued to explore the varied terrain, winding through our forest of woods and twigs. I think the ants just really wanted to get a better feel at this time of what their new environment was like before switching up their objectives to food collection. It was evident by these guards standing in threat position ready to attack with acid spray at any moment that security was another top priority on their minds at this time. I couldn't wait to learn more about this golden ant colony of ours. And again, diet was my number one inquiry. I knew that if I could nail the colony's diet down, they would surely succeed to grow into the millions. For a protein source, I decided to place in my ant colony's favorite meat, a chopped up dubia cockroach. As you can tell by the juices, it was fresh and ready to be devoured. All I needed to see was workers feeding on the roach, their protein source, and the jelly, their carb source, to know that this golden ant colony would thrive in captivity. Because AC family, my biggest fear was if I couldn't get this colony to successfully feed from food items that were readily available to me, then sadly I would have to let the ants go. It made me sad because this was my third attempt at starting a new ant colony this year. But I knew the reality of this hobby is not all ant species make good pets in captivity due to things like getting their diet right, which can be extra challenging for very specialized feeders like polyrachis ants. I decided to come back later and see if the ants had decided to feed from our goodies. An hour later, I checked up on the ants. Sadly, there seemed to have been no change. The ants weren't seen feeding from the jelly, nor the roach. I removed both from the enclosure. We had to try again. I was determined not to give up. Now guys, what I did see in their enclosure the next day was pretty shocking. Have a look. The ants had established a garbage site in their test tube. It looks like there were mostly cocoon casings and perhaps a dead body in there. But what struck me as most amazing was this. Check it out, AC family. Notice what looks like a carpet of brown mold throughout the test tube? Well, that's not mold. It's actually ant silk. Yup, 
Turns out not only spiders build webs. AC family, I forgot to mention that polyrachis ants are also a type of weaver ant in that they use silk produced by their larvae to help construct nests from leaves, debris, and or mud up in the trees, in crevices, or within soil, depending on species. Our golden ants here have been quite busy overnight slinging their silken mats onto the glass of their test tube. Perhaps my camera lights the night before caused them to decide to do this. They also made a pretty cool opening at their nest entrance, manned by guards of course, and another here on the roof to keep watch. But all of this was a bit concerning guys, with the golden ants having expended a lot of silk overnight creating these webbed walls. I knew the colony was likely starving for protein. You see, it takes a lot of protein for the larvae to spin their silk, an important building material in the lives of polyrachis ants. And so we see family, after thinking about it for a long time and deciding on the best food to try out next in this golden ant diet experiment, I came up with the best idea which in my mind, I felt our new beloved golden ants would not be able to resist. This was going to be epic guys. AC family, behold my next choices for food offerings to our beloved golden ants. First, baby Turkestan roaches, also known as lats. I felt that perhaps the dubia roaches were much too big and intimidating for our new starting colony, but I figured if they're afraid of eating lobster, Perhaps they'd accept bite-sized shrimp. I also felt these little guys were a great choice because soft-bodied forest roaches like these do exist in the habitats in which these ants live naturally. It was highly likely that small roaches like these were part of our golden ants natural diet. Next, I also wanted to try these baby forest crickets. I knew for a fact that this exact species of cricket existed naturally in the forests from which our golden ants were from. I felt it was highly likely that they too were part of our ants natural diet in the wild, or at least I hope so. Both these prey items were great protein sources and best of all, were easily accessible to me. I don't breed these particular prey items in my collection, but I could easily order them online. I crossed my fingers and hoped to God our ants would accept them. Here goes nothing. With tweezers, I fished out a roach. Get over here. Gotcha. To make things easier, I decided I'd be squishing this roach a bit. Sorry fella, and thank you for giving up your life to provide nourishment to my ant colony. Hopefully. I placed it at the entrance of the colony's nest. Immediately, the guards were alarmed. They smelled the roach. And... Taken. Yes, accepted. AC family, they like it. The ant dragged the roach into the nest to show the rest of the colony its well-needed catch. The surrounding ant celebrated and took tastes of the fresh roach juices oozing from its body. I was so happy. Oh man, they even ripped off its leg. Okay girls, so savage. It was official. The ants loved these baby Turkestan roaches. Noted. But would they also like the baby crickets? Let's try. I carefully offered one to a guard that was standing at the entrance. It smelled the cricket, but I had troubles trying to get the ant to bite it. I think it was more preoccupied with attacking my tweezers. The cricket got caught in the cotton fibers, so I left it there. And watch what happened, AC family. While the guard was busy trying to kill my tweezers, an ant came up from behind and was like, hmm, I'll take that, thank you very much. And she yoinked the cricket, taking it into the nest. Awesome, and so funny. The ants within the nest proceeded to devour the cricket, cum gusto. So happy about that. I decided to offer another roach. And success. This one struggled a bit. Oops, I think I didn't squish it enough. My bad. The ants were effective at keeping it seized. Suddenly though, bam, the roach managed to get away from the ants clutches for a moment. But a little acid spray and strong mandibles got the roach back under control. The ants feasted upon it in a festivity of ant joy and culinary celebration. I continued to feed the colony more squished crickets, which they relished. And baby roaches. I left these food gifts at the entrance and the ants happily accepted them, lapping up the juices that oozed from their bodies. 
before dragging them into the nest for further consumption. The ants had a voracious appetite, eating everything I gave them. I wanted to see how much they would eat at a time. It was clear the ants really needed the protein right now. And guys, you want to see the most beautiful thing ever? A few hours later, after the feast, I later caught sight of this. Look! A worker was holding up a fattened larva to spin more silk. They were fortifying the silk wall and had a big patch they still needed to fill up with silk. My guess was the larvae had run out of protein to produce the silk, but now that the ants had an abundance of it from our food offerings, they could finally patch up the remaining hole. How cool is that, right guys? Well into the night, the ants were eager to accept whatever I left at their nest opening. It was all just an amazing experience to watch them feed, and super gratifying to know they were getting the nourishment they needed. The next day, I noticed the ants were carrying newly laid batches of eggs, again likely a result from the protein surplus the day before. The walls were also looking mighty thick and would soon probably be visually impenetrable. Overall, I was just so happy we had at least found food items that were easy for me to get that the ants loved. In terms of a sugar source, I tried honey, which they rejected. But I find the ants will be able to get the carbs they need for now from the roaches and crickets themselves. As I'll be feeding the roaches fruits and grains, and the ants eat whatever is in the prey's gut, I believe at this stage what was more important was a steady and reliable protein source for the colony, until the colony got bigger in size. Now AC family, at the start of this video, I told you I'd be needing your help and as you may know, we always name our pet ant colonies on this channel. So now I ask you all, what should we name this very awesome and unique colony of golden ants? Leave your name suggestions in the comments and your AC Senate and I will choose our top 5 favorites for all of us to vote on in a future video. I had high hopes for this new colony of golden ants. And though I may have had some challenges in the past, it was yet another lesson to me to always keep trying and never give up until you succeed. Perseverance and persistence pays off, which I'm sure all ants already naturally know. I truly hope this colony grows into a massive ant kingdom like our other ant colonies, because I feel a huge colony of polyrachis ants would not only be totally darn cool, but would also be a total dream come true for me as an ant keeper. I'll be keeping these ants in this quarantine enclosure until I feel I've learned enough about them so I could move them into an appropriately designed, larger, and more lushly decorated bioactive tank. I can't wait for what's ahead for this ant colony. But AC family, now that we knew our golden ants had a taste for small, soft-bodied insects, my mind was already thinking into the future for sustainability. Admittedly, having to order baby crickets and Turkestan roaches every week for years and years from online was both a hassle and not sustainable. Seeing as in case of a lockdown again, or some other unforeseen factor, I don't want to have to rely on a third party to ship me ant food. I've come to learn since lockdown last year how much better it is to breed your ant prey food at home. Now I've bred both crickets and the species of roach before, and I literally loathed the experience because it was smelly, the enclosures attracted mites and flies, and was all around a high-maintenance venture. But AC family, as if Mother Nature heard me contemplating a solution to all this, on a night of pure serendipity this week, a huge natural event randomly occurred, causing swarms of a particular insect that I knew might also fit into our golden ant's preferred diet flew into the air. I captured some of these insects and placed them temporarily into this plastic water bottle. I know for a fact that many ant species indeed relish the eusocial creatures that lay inside this bottle. And I know they would prove to be an excellent food source for our new golden ants, as well as all the ants of our antiverse, in fact. AC family, it's time to start mass producing and diversifying our ant food. And welcome back, these very cool insects to the channel. AC family, did you enjoy today's episode? I just love these new golden ants of ours. 
And I can't wait to show you what's inside this mystery water bottle. I think you guys can read my mind, right? You won't want to miss next week's episode, so if you haven't yet, do smash that subscribe button and bell icon now and hit all so you get notified at every upload. Also, don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really mean a lot to me, guys. Thank you. AC and our colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to watch a sneak peek at what lays in this bottle to be shown in next week's video, go check them out. And guys, did you know that it's anting season in the Northern Hemisphere? And you don't even need to leave your home to start an ant colony. You can catch pregnant queen ants from the safety of your own backyard, balcony, or open window starting this month. Be sure to visit AntsCanada.com for all your ant keeping and collecting gear shipped to you in a special package from our ant loving facility in the USA. So you can get the most out of your ant keeping experience. We ship worldwide and also offer full email support if you need our help. We also have a helpful forum and ant colony trading marketplace on the site. Visit AntsCanada.com today. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what factor determines the sex of an ant? Congratulations to Kyle Cameron, who answered the number of chromosomes. Congratulations, Kyle. You just won a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what is your favorite thing about these golden ants? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's ant love forever.